What does fitness really mean to you? If you're a girl, is it an hourglass figure that's the envy of the other girls? Or if you're a guy, is it a spanking new set of six-pack abs? Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the brand new Men's Health and Women's Health show. A program that will not just tell you how to get fit, but also be with you on your journey from fit to fittest. Up front, we take you to the very glamorous Lakme Fashion Week, on in Mumbai right now. Now the models look great in their designer clothes, but do they look as good without clothes as well? Today we join them in their workouts and see how fashion models keep fit. Hi, this is Radhika Bhalla and I'm here at the Lakme Fashion Week Winter huh? Festive 2014. The shows have been a glamorous affair so far, with models strutting down in some great designs. But amidst all the action, how do they manage to stay fit? We find out. Hi, my name is Alesa Rao. Hi, I'm Amit Ranjan. My name is Nikila Nandgopal and I'm here at Lakme Fashion Week. Flat stomach, waistline, hamstrings and calf is something that I concentrate a lot. Our fittings and shows and it's all very hectic. When we do our fashion weeks, we don't end up getting time to work out or hit the gym. Sometimes it's very difficult for me to maintain my fitness regime. I love to run, but it's really tough to get the time to do it. But I try to manage when I'm working also day and night. I haven't had the chance to do that. Not just concentrate on one body part, but you can at the same time concentrate on a couple of body parts by doing one workout. I work out six days a week. But then Surya Namaskars are good. I don't have an exact diet. I kind of eat everything. I drink lots of water. I stay away from red meat. Food never spoils anybody. We spoil it by eating wrongly. 8 to 10 eggs, egg oils a day. Don't have too much protein, too much sugar, too much carb. Chicken and like lunch and dinner both. And I do sneak in a cupcake once in a while. Eat to live and not live to eat. I usually pick up 10 kgs dumbbells, but uh, just for the ones who are beginning, can try sides. We all know this. Fine, you can do this in a stretch, actually 100 counts. Believe me, it works. And if you feel you're getting bored, just switch on the music or watch television and get engrossed into it. And when the song gets over, you can stop. So this way you'll feel you've not done much of counts, but actually you've done a lot of counts. You should run first and then, you know, get, get that thing in your body, get that current in your body and then only start working out in the gym. And if you hit the gym also, you should do like 10 to 15 minute at least warm-up exercises. Just before my show starts or I just like have 5 minutes and I don't have much of space where I can work out, especially for my lower abs, then I do a very simple exercise, make my hands in a mountain position and just cycle my legs. So when you're doing that, you're actually working on your abs at the same time. Crunches on the medicine ball, which is, well, it's supposed to be good for your six pack. Planks for about two minutes. Weights, which are good for the sides. And then Surya Namaskar, which is good for your entire body as well as keeping you calm and helping your breathing. Push-ups is one of the best exercises because it's like, you know, cover all your chest muscles and shoulders and then triceps. I try and combine two workouts together. We all know squats is for your butt and your thigh, but at the same time, I try and add the kick. So what happens, you're working on your butt, your thigh, and with the kick, you're also working on your abs. So this way, in one exercise, you get to do three parts of your body. Stay fit and think positive. To be uh, regular in terms of your workouts, to look after oneself and to eat healthy, I think uh, that's what is uh, important for every individual. You have to be 
looking that powerful that when you slap somebody, it shouldn't look that you might fall. By eating right and doing yoga, that's the way I like to be because uh, yoga actually cleanses uh, from inside, you know, it works a lot on the internal organs as well. So it's not only a exercise that you do for looking good externally, but in the bargain you also kind of uh, do good to your internal organs. So I really like doing yoga. Bring out the Mardani, bring out the Shakti in you. How does a guy weighing 110 kilos bring his weight down to 79, take control of his life and then develop a set of six-pack abs? 31-year-old Tarun Sholarajan from Bangalore joins us with a lesson on how we can reinvent our lives too. Most of my life I've been obese. From this to this, it's a dream turnaround. I was born an endomorph, which is a fatty body type, into a family that, you know, that diabetes thrives in. So what is it that changed? And what is behind this amazing turnaround? I've always loved Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan, uh, Rithik Roshan, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Frank Zane. These guys were my idols. So I always looked up to them. I wanted to be like them. I quit a dream job in global sales, marketing and business development where I was developing business for and selling to multi-billionaires across the world. So I left all of that and I uh, restarted my journey in my life into fitness and nutrition. I've been coaching people online and uh, I also transformed last year uh, from 25.5% body fat in the beginning of last year to 7.5% uh, uh, by about September of last year. And today with a body fat percentage of an amazing 7%, Tarun Sholarajan is as ripped as a chainsaw. At the end of March, I won the the first uh, and biggest international fitness modeling competition held in India called the Fit Factor, which was part of uh, Chris Gethin's uh, Body Power Expo that took place in Mumbai. That brought me to men's health and then things have started to work out even better. I start my day by detoxifying my body. The whole night your body has produced free radicals, you would like to detoxify. I normally have uh, a greens based juice like uh, spinach and uh, radish, cucumber, carrot based juice. Or I just go with wheatgrass one shot with uh, one liter of water and one full lime squeezed into it. My four meals in a day consist of proteins fats and vegetables and two meals consists of proteins, fats, vegetables and carbohydrates. So I have at least one meal before my workout. It's a misconception again that you need to do a fasting based uh, workout. You'd rather go in with a lot of energy, lift the weights, put in more effort and hence burn more calories overall. Consider fats like uh, lubricants, right? What do they turn into? They can turn into oils. And these are the lubricants of your body. They help in detoxifying you, in also metabolizing your body fat to be used as fuel during the workouts. It's not just the diet, but the combination of fried diet and appropriate workout that's helped Tarun. About a 40 minute uh, weight training or resistance based routine, do 45 minutes of hardcore weight training 5 to 6 times a week, that's what I do. Don't swing the weights, control the weight, use the working muscle, engage it, 
to lift. Stretch the antagonist. That's the tricep. Use the bicep to lift. That's how you got to lift. For cardio like say 35 minute walk at about 60% intensity, that's once a week. And uh, about a 20 minute uh, say complete body weight cardio routine, I do it about once a week. It's more of a high intensity interval based training that I do. It can include uh, anywhere between Tabata sets um, or it can include martial arts, any form of dance or sometimes even cycling as well. You don't necessarily need to step on the treadmill. Uh, get your heart rate up and you can do it any which ways. Weight training is what will ensure that you look amazing all the time and it has also been proven uh, to, uh, to improve your lifespan as well. That's about it, just go with your passion. If you find a passion, if you have it, just go for it. After that heavy dose of motivation, it's now time for a bit of guidance. Fitness First Master Trainer Manish Ruhel, one of the few internationally qualified trainers in India today, gives us the dope on the kettlebell workout. A workout that I'm told can make any teapot look sexy. Now we are going to talk about kettlebell methodologies out of which first off we would talk about kettlebell for general fitness. It simply means that anybody and everybody can do these exercises depending on their own fitness level. Squat as we all know is the king of the exercises and it covers half of our lower body. When we talk about kettlebell overhead squat which looks like this. You have a kettlebell, you clean it, you take it overhead, make sure you are in lockout, which simply means your bicep is crossing by your ear. Allows your body to load vertically. Now this exercise needs to be done in a certain manner where the kettlebell always stays over your head. As you go down deep, sink into the squat, you sit all the way, see, bell still stays overhead and vertical loaded which means I can go up I can come down up and down simply the benefit of the training is when we stand in this wide of a stance it challenges our base of support because it's not as wide as a normal squat we usually do not only that if you have noticed when I took the bell up, I stayed here. My back, my back extensors work harder than usual because I'll have to make sure so that the kettlebell doesn't fall forward, I have to load it vertically. Because of which my extensors will work hard and they will allow me to go down and come up. Simply means my glutes, my quads are working hard my core stability is trying to challenge myself because I'm on the lower base of support. At the same time, my extensions are working hard. You simply want to bring a kettlebell, take the handle down, stay on it, make sure it doesn't slip, and you're safe enough to do it. In the same position, you need to go and maintain yourself. This plank is slightly harder because in the terms of stabilization, I'm more unstable this time because I'm on the lower base of support. Hence, my stability is gonna get challenged more. Benefits of the training, increased strength in the core and the stabilizers work harder. And as we all know, stabilization leads to mobilization Hence, apparently we're going to get more benefits from the training. Now, cricketers may not look as fit as footballers do. But guess what? There's still a great degree of fitness involved. Australian cricketing legend Glenn McGrath tells us more. 
there are no excuses. It doesn't matter how busy you are, that you're traveling all the time, you can always do a little bit of exercise, it doesn't take very long and so I guess by saying that the best way to do it is by using your own body weight. You don't need the, the barbells and gym equipment, you can just use your own body weight whether it's push-ups in the room or whether it's just some squats. So you know, using your own body weight, a bit hard with jeans on but you know, just squatting down, just doing you know, 10, 11 of those, do a few different uh, sets of those and gets the heart rate up, puts a bit of strength back in your legs because you're on your legs all the time so that's what I try to do. Keeping active, um, getting outdoors, you know, really experiencing what the world has to offer. So get out on the beach, go for a swim. Very lucky in Australia where we've got everything there right at the back door. You have to sort of soak it in. So you go and sit somewhere and just sort of think about what happened because analyzing was a big thing I used to do. Um, you've got to go through that process and then just get away. We now come to my most favorite part of the show, the restaurant spine, where we take a nutritionist to a restaurant review and see her watch what she eats. Are dim sums actually healthy? We are going to find out. Today, we are spying Yavacha, a haven for Chinese lovers. Our nutritionist Lovemeet Batra is on her way and she'll be here any minute. I can't wait. Good, how are you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to leave it all up to you, Lovni, on what to order and what to eat. Okay. Hi. Can we have vegetable crystal dumplings and shiitake mushroom dumplings? And we'll get vegetable fried rice with Singapore fried rice. So what about dessert? Let's keep it for later. Oh great, the dim sums have arrived. I can't wait to try them. Me too. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to try these. Let's go with the vegetable ones first. <laughs> Take them. Mm. This tastes so great. Yeah. I never thought vegetable dim sum skin taste tastes so good. It comes with a thinner coating, so you always have room for more. Oh wow. Oh great, our chicken is here. Yes. Can't wait again. Do you know love meat? I love gravy, but whenever I see too much of it, it makes me uncomfortable. So how are we gonna avoid this now? And between the stir fry and kung pao, what are we gonna go for? See, kung pao chicken is the chili chicken. As you can see, the stir fried chicken comes with more gravy. So go for kung pao chicken. If you want to go for stir fried chicken, just pick the chicken pieces and leave the gravy alone. You can also tell the server to take it because you cannot eat what's not there. So you're gonna ask him to take it back then? Yeah. You know, when people usually dine out, they're always confused about fried rice or noodles. I mean, it's, it's an epic confusion. So how do we solve that? You know the quality about Chinese food is it's so hard to avoid soy sauce. In these Singapore noodles, the seasoning is of curry powder. Whereas in any uh, fried rice, there will be soy sauce for sure. So I'll pick the noodles. Great, I will do too. Release with the raspberry palaiska. Yeah. This looks divine. I just feel like having all of it. No, wait. You'll always follow a three bite rule for a dessert. Have three bites and just leave it. You'll indulge without feeling guilty. There's always temptation around us. The trick is to choose it well. 
with the dim sums i got my vegetables packed with fiber and antioxidants With the Kung Pao chili chicken, I got my portion of proteins and with the Singapore fried noodles, I got my share fare of carbs. And definitely with the desserts, you can indulge as long as you follow the three bite rule and be safe. Now that I know that Chinese food can be healthy too, I'm going to indulge guilt free the next time I'm here and I hope you do too. With camera person Zaheer, this is Seher for Men's Health. That's all we have for you today. Until next week, keep fit and don't forget, we won't be happy with your fit not until you're at your fit.